Welcome back to another episode of the Inquisitive Mama podcast. This is episode 69. I hope everyone is having a great week so far. Tuesday, we just we just passed Monday, but tonight's guest is a dear friend of mine, a University of Florida graduate, an Olympic runner, Grant Holloway. It's a pleasure to have him on tonight's show. We've been trying to get him on the podcast for a while now. He's a crazy <laughs> schedule, but it's so good to have him on. So how's it going, my man? It's been good, man. Like I said, it's, I apologize. I, I'm not the best with when it comes to social media DMs and everything like that. So I appreciate you being patient and, and understanding that I look, there's life outside of social media. So I appreciate it. I'm glad to be on the show finally, man. And I, I've heard and seen nothing but good things. So we're going to keep this episode going. We're going to have a good time. Yes, sir. Most definitely. So before we do get into tonight, to tonight's show, I had to ask you, where did your Instagram username come from? So Flamingo started back in high school. Um, coach Sauer, uh, one of my one of my high school coaches, um, at the time didn't hit puberty yet. I haven't had adolescence, so I was just a tall, skinny runner trying to play football at the same time. And he was like, "You have legs like a flamingo." So um, I kind of just stuck with it. And um, this look twenty five, uh, not twenty five years later, and. 25 years old now and I'm still sticking with that same nickname. Yeah, most definitely because I was really curious to know. I was like, where did Flamingo come from? Because <laughs> it's it's a catchy username. Yeah, so I mean, it's I like it between uh Flamingo and Wonder Boy. I think those are the two nicknames that um that 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 stuck with me since high school. Yeah, so where did, you know, track start for you? as you know track and field start for you as a young kid because you you know obviously you didn't start you know yesterday you didn't start in college you know you had a really good high school career as well but you also did play football so you know where did it all start for you you know with track and field um with track and field it's just one of those <clears throat> excuse me it's just one of the events or sports that I started at a young age um you know I, I was playing I was doing all sports uh, between soccer Tried out lacrosse for uh, literally a day. Got hit in the face with the ball. I was like, okay, this sport's not for me. Wanted to do baseball. That wasn't for me. And then, you know, football and track just kind of stuck. So, <clears throat> started at a young age. Did AAU all the way up till about middle school. From middle school to high school. High school, college. And college now, I'm running professionally for Adidas. So, it just started real young. And it's just one event, especially with the hurdles. I just started young. And, you know, it's funny now because the people that I used to race against, I'm racing against now. And um, one actually one person that, that used to kill me when I was a little kid, Robert Dunning, my training partner now. So we, we're, we're trying to change the world. And, you know, at one point we were ranked number one and number two in the world. Obviously, it's a little bit later in the season and people have um, ran a little bit more times. But, um, you know, track and field is just one of the things that it's, I started at a young age and, and now I'm here. So you attended – Grassfield High School in Chesapeake, Virginia. But like we said, you know, it didn't start with with track. So talk about a little bit about your football career because I did research and you were a four star wide receiver <laughs> in high school. And that's that's no joke. That's a legit, you know, title right there. So talk about the little bit about the football career. Um, like, uh, football was always a it was it was an interesting sport for me because I've never really been the one to be a be a team player. I'll I'll admit that. <laughs> I was always very selfish. So we could lose by maybe 20, 30 points. And as long as I had 10 catches for maybe 100 and 110 yards, I was like, all right, hey guys, it's a tough loss. But <laughs> you know, I've always just been one of the guys where I just wanted to, you know, have mine. But you know, in, in high school, just really started off really just as a as a role player. Um we had two uh division one running backs at the time. Vincent Lowe and Isaiah Harper. So they kind of led our team to really, you know, regionals. And, and we had a side of state, but we ended up losing. But, um, you know, I just started off as a role player every now and then, go about 15, 20 yards deep for a long, deep pass whenever it was like maybe first and 10 on our on our, on our our sideline or on our hash or our half of the ball. I forgot what the terms are in football now. But, um, you know, <laughs> just playing the role. And then as I got older, I kind of, went into that, you know, that that key player role. And, you know, I was running back, wide receiver, kind of anything just to make the team, you know, win. Uh, I was able to take the team to a regional state, uh, regional championship. We lost um, by two points to uh, division rival. But, you know, 
like I said, like I kind of just knew on that next level, I really wouldn't have made it um, just because, like I said, I was very selfish. So kind of it kind of really sealed the coffin when I was I was being recruited for both football and track um, here at the University of Florida. And Jim McElwain was he said that you're not Florida. You're not Florida material. So I was like, all right, that's all I need to hear. So I took my talents down to the track. Safe to say that it worked out all the best for you. And Jim McElwain wasn't Florida material. We all know how that yeah. ended there. So. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's too Apple don't fall too far from the tree. <laughs> no, it does not. So, but I did want to ask you, why did you choose the University of Florida out of all track and field schools? Now, I understand the University of Florida is a very big SEC school. You know, they're known for a lot of sports, not just, you know, football and basketball and baseball. But, you know, why University of Florida for their track and field program? Uh, so it's a running joke right now with University of Florida track and field program. It's the Alabama football for track and field. You okay. Know, every year, every year we're in the – we um, – every year they are in the um, – <laughs> they're in the running for either top two or top three. If they fall the top four, it was literally a rebuilding year. And then they're going to come back striking hard the next year. Um, for me, in order to be the best, you got you got to compete with the best. So I just decided just to come down to Gainesville. At the time, um, I was originally committed with Noah Lyles and Josephus Lyles. Uh, we would have made up the top three best recruits in the 2016 track and field class. Um, we had a jumper uh, alongside named Jamar Ward. He was the number one jumper for long jump. So all these all these people were kind of like how LeBron went to Miami Heat to join Chris Bosch and Dwayne Wade. We kind of, you know, we, we started doing that before NIL and, and transfer portal. So um, really it was just one of the things where it's like, all right, if we can get these key players here and we can all play our role, we can continue to win national championships. But um, obviously I still love it. I'm still here training. Um, Olympic, like you said, Olympic silver medalist, and we got Olympics next year to a three-time world champion. So obviously it's working out for me and my family while I'm here. And um, the biggest thing is, is just continue just to, to thrive off of that. Of course, we're going to have some up and down days, but, you know, see the good rather than the bad. And, you know, we keep it pushing. Most definitely. So this one yeah. definitely resonates with you here. You're an eight-time NCAA champion. You're the only man in collegiate history to win three consecutive indoor and outdoor high hurdles. And your nickname, the Wonder Boy. What does that mean to you when you hear stuff like that? Like, how does how does that just sit with you? It's like, how do you how do you feel when you hear that? Yeah, the the Wonder Boy term kind of sums it all up. You know, um, it it was at a point where everybody would, that that record that you said it stood for forty years. So it kind of came to the conclusion that oh, nobody's gonna be able to break it. It's it's just there. It's one of those records that just it's not gonna be broken. And like you said, Wonder Boy comes along and. He does what he has to do. And, you know, all, I could have had done half of those 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 three those, those titles that you just named. I could have had done half of that with my team. Um, I'm really big on, you know, giving my team and my family and, you know, people that help me through tough times to to really be there. Yeah, I'm, I'm out there running the hurdle race, but uh, it's a thousand other people that, you know, has made that possible for myself. And the biggest thing is, is like I said, is, you know, it's my success, but it's also our success. So my team, you know, with those national titles, collegiate records, world record holder, um, all that stuff that we say is it, it's part of my team as well. I just play a small part in it. So this one here, I really wanted to ask you, what does it feel like to be the greatest collegiate track and field runner in NCAA history? <laughs> it's, um, it's humbling, but then at the same time, how you just said that, I want someone else to come by and, Mm -hmm. slap, slap slap all my records off the wall um, wow. that's what make that's what makes the sport grow um obviously when i came through 2017 to 2019 it was you know something unheard of you never seen nobody like grant holloway but soon i want another grant holloway to come through obviously his name's not gonna be grant holloway but i want another <laughs> one of you know someone of my caliber to come through and you know basically just clean house the whole ncaa um you think of somebody like maybe Let's just use like Usain Bolt, um, for example. I want someone to come through the NCAA and do that same exact thing. How Usain Bolt really just dominated the the track and field world from 2008 all the way to really 2016. So just small things like that, man. I like seeing the sport grow. Obviously, track and field is a uh, secondary event because we live in America. You know, you think you got 
football, you got baseball. Um, that's another big. Uh, we got American, uh, well, not American basketball. But we got basketball though. But you got these three sports, then track and field is kind of like um, inferior to that. So my goal is just continue, just let it grow, um, and and really just bring 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 life to it. Yeah, most definitely. I'm glad that you said that because like passing to the torch, you want somebody to come and slap, you know, take your records. I think of that when I hear of Tom Brady and Patrick Mahomes, because Mahomes, you know, he's evolving before our very own eyes. He's already, you know, already on the big stage. So it's great to hear, you know, professional athletes like yourself say that because a lot of people, you know, wouldn't say that. And they would say, you know, it's all about me and not, you know, taking that humble aspect, but records are meant to be broken. You know, we see it every day and every year in sports. Look what we just happened with LeBron and Kareem, you know? Yeah, I think that's the like. Yeah, I think you hit the nail right right in the center because, you know, track and field is one of the sports. Like, if you take it to Europe or anywhere else, it's it's the cream of the crop. It's, it's what people watch. Obviously, we're competing with LeBron James, uh, Tiger Woods, Floyd Mayweather, Conor McGregor. We're uh, like you said, Tom Brady, Patrick Mahomes. We're comp- competing with all these people. And we're kind of like you said, we're we're like second to none. We're at the very bottom of the totem pole. But like, if you give us a chance, we can be just as special as anybody else. This will quote here from you. They say if you don't throw up, that it wasn't a hard enough workout. So let's just say today I threw up a couple of times. Do you remember when you said that? <laughs> yeah, uh, not too long ago, actually. It was like right before. Uh, I think it was right before I left for London. Actually, um, I was at a workout. It was a hot day per usual here in Gainesville. And, um, yeah, the heat got the best of me. Uh, I Like I said, I haven't. Usually I'm the one to go out. I, I hydrate the day before. I got my, you know, I do everything that I got to do. But sometimes the heat just always wins. Most definitely. I remember a time in high school, I ran track and field nowhere near as good as you. But <laughs> we, had, we, had a, we had a morning practice, and I actually threw up – I threw up like three or four times and I was like wow this is really no joke this was my my senior high school because I ran track track and field my junior year and my senior year we had a practice we had a brand new coach and he worked us like dogs man I was like oh my gosh this is the real track and field so I hope my uh junior high school coach doesn't hear this but he was nowhere near as hard (laughs) as the senior year coach that we had I won't say any names but man that guy worked us to the bone. And I was like, I started to rethink that track and field for me. I was like, this is not for me. I was like, I like the fun track and field, but no, it's a, it's a commitment, like for sure, you know? So, but, uh, uh, you and coach Mike Holloway, you guys share the same name from university of Florida. When I researched, I thought you guys were related, but you guys aren't related at all. But What was it like being coached by Coach Mike Holloway? Because he has a lot of accolades himself, and he's been at the University of Florida for quite some time now. Yeah, I mean, it's just like anything else. You see the coach and his accolades and what he's done with the athletes that come through the program and after the program. I say it lightly, and I'm not trying to throw no shade, but when people are here at the University of Florida, they run fast. And um, as soon as they leave or they try to switch coaches or jump ship, that's when things get a little – you know, shaky. And it just, that just attests to, you know, all this training. Now, some days, yes, he's crazy. And um, I don't, I don't like the, you know, the training that I go through, but, um, <laughs> you know, at the end of the year, maybe in August or September, I'm always pulling up a trophy. I'm always breaking some type of record. So the biggest thing is, is just going forward is just continue just to trust. I mean, like even the day we had like a little, I had through like a little temper tantrum just because I want to be so great in the passage there. And yeah. he just looked at me and he was like, look, if you do this, I promise at the end of the, at the, end of the year in 30, 40 days, um, one's world champ. So uh, I run in 20 days. So in 19 days, it'll be, it'll be, you know, it'll be a good, it could be a good time. So it's just one of the things just to test his training and the people that come through and people that can, you know, say they did great. Most definitely. So during your time at the University of Florida, you were an eight time NCAA national champion. Take us back to a time where, you won your, your national champion. I mean, you won eight times. So take us back to a time where you won one of those national championships. Uh, the first one is always the best one. Uh, 60 meters, 2017, Texas A&M, lane five. I think I ran seven, 757s. 
Wow. It was a rather slow time than what I ran now, but you know, it's just, you know, the first one's always just hit a little bit different. Um, we ended up losing that meat by a point, but I say it lightly again, but that just shows the test that I'm a little bit of a selfish person because I was still happy that I was able to win my first national title. And then from there, uh, it hit a little bit different going 2017 outdoors because I, I wasn't really the favorite to win. I had hit like a little smaller wall and, um, you know, I found a way just to get to the finish line before everybody else. And, you know, from that year, 2018, 2019, 2019 Worlds, 20, the only, like I said, the only, I mean, I, I've been in, so that's six. So let's say that's seven, that's eight, that's nine. I've been in 10 majors, major championships in my, in my lifetime, and I've only lost one. So wow. I like my odds. I like my odds when it comes to major championships. So how different do you think, <clears throat> excuse me, your career would have been if you would have chose football instead of so, track and field? It would not have been a career. Um, wow. I would have seen myself. I definitely would see myself in the NFL. Um, now, this is the humble me talking. I don't think I would have made it big like a rookie season like Justin Jefferson or Jamar Chase. But um, I think, like I said, I would have been a, a good role player like mm -hmm. my, um, Valdez Scantlin. uh Green Bay now is at the Kansas City Chiefs. I think I would have been like a role player like that. But um, the NFL is just tough, man. You know, when you have grown men chasing you and Aaron Donald wants to just kill you every play and small <laughs> things like that, it just, you know, it's it's different. Um, I'm kind of glad I chose track and field because like I, to say, like I said before, it's kind of like it's me versus me. You know, at, at yeah. every race is me versus the clock. And um, I think that's a better fit than, you know, me trying to grin it out or trust somebody or trust you or – but, I mean, if I have to trust Patrick Mahomes, I'll, I'll put my trust in him. But, you know, just small th just small things like that. Like, I want to be able to put all the trust in myself and trust my training and go after it. So this one here, after you set the world record in the 60-meter hurdles and you had an undefeated indoor season in which you won the 2021 World Indoor Tour title, you were run up for the Indoor Men's Athlete of the Year title by track and field. What was that experience like for you during 2021, a year right after COVID, kind of just starting to slowly come back because the pandemic was so crazy? And we'll get into that, but I really wanted to hear your thoughts about this here. Um, it was it, it it sucked, but during COVID, I went through a very, I guess you could say, dark time. Uh, just yeah. anger from you know just being cooped up in the house um really just it was just it was just a bad time for me but, but that bad time kind of made me grow and mature at a, a faster rate so really you think all of all of really 2021 i'm just training i'm lifting weights i'm going on runs so basically when it's time to go compete it's like all right i can i'm blasting out the block so first meet 7:35 and then i think i started that like mid january by the end of basically, yeah, end of February, world record, and then literally four months later, second fastest all time outdoors. So, you know, I have the fastest time indoors, and I have the second fastest time outdoors. So, like, I'm kind of starting to put my, you know, my stamp on on these one ten hurdles. But it's more so about the longevity uh, and the consistency that you can put in the sport. Um, it's the same thing about life. You know, if you can stay consistent throughout life and day by day, that's how you get a better, become a better person. Yeah. I really like that one a lot, but my question for you is, is how did you maintain your composure and your level of sustainability throughout your time during the pandemic? Because a lot of people just kind of, you know, threw in the towel and gave up, but you know, you just said yeah. me versus me, you didn't give up, you know, you're ready to run out of the block. So how did you, you know, maintain your level of consistency throughout the time of the pandemic? Yeah, I mean, during the pandemic, I was 22 years old, so I knew I was just getting started. So I didn't want to really want to waste time or waste a year saying like, oh, it was COVID's fault. So let me get back on my Grizzly 2022 or 2020. You know what I mean? Like stuff yeah. like that. My main goal was, all right, I have a chance to really, at the time, we still had a, another major indoor uh, at the time before they canceled that as well. But my thing was, is like every time I have a major championship, uh, I want Grant Holloway to be in the running. And, and like I said, it's life. You win some, you lose some, but you live to fight another day. But as long as I'm in that top three, I'm always in that discussion of, you know, whenever there was a major championship, you can never count Grant Holloway out. Yeah. So my next question for you is, is how do you balance your personal life with 
you know, just your every, everyday life, just as in, you know, taking a break from track and running, like, what do you do in your free time? Like, you know, how does a daily life look for you? You know, what does, yeah. what does it look like? Um, right now, like, I'm in, I'm in kind of like world championship mode. So it's a lot of film, yeah. a lot of just like getting away from social media because around this time, everybody's doing predictions and yeah. then what they, you know, everybody's voicing their opinion, but outside of track, uh, I was, it's funny. I was just making a joke with my mom and my girlfriend uh, a couple, a couple <laughs> minutes ago. I was saying I was a wine and bourbon connoisseur or sommelier. That's what we said. <laughs> so I, I love, I love both of those. Um, I love, I'm, I'm really at this itch for golf. I used to play um, the video game a lot, but slowly that started to fade out and everything like that. But, um, you know, those two things and, you know, I'm in the process of uh, moving into a new house and trying to do some other stuff for charity work. Like I just try to keep myself busy and keep my mind, yeah. you know, going Usually when it's time to step away from track, I have no problem stepping away because I know I got to give it another six, seven months later down the line. But like when it's time to enjoy it and sit back and relax, I I know how to do that too. So what is some advice that you could give to track and field runners, but also just all sports in general, just young kids looking to find their dream, looking to find their way in this world. If they're looking to get into track and field or just trying to become something in sports, what is your advice to those types of people? Those just kids. The, the big, the biggest thing is for me that I that it took me a while to really understand is um you know it's it's you have to you gotta wait a moment for your moment. So like it might not work out now. Like you might be getting last or six, or you might be missing out on world teams. Um, like like myself when I was coming up in the ranks, I never really made a junior team. My first world team was twenty nineteen. But really, just you know, waiting, waiting that, waiting that time out, going through the battle scars, going through your trials and tribulations, and understanding that, all right, life sucks right now, but it, it's gonna get better. You know, you're gonna figure out, you know, what I need to do to make that team or what I gotta do to get that promotion. You know, it it never makes sense like hindsight, but like when you look at when you look back at it after it's done, maybe a month or two down the line, you can say be like, okay, it really sucked then, but I'm glad I stuck with it and. You know, now, now I got the job or now I can do this and now I can do that. Yeah, most definitely. So my question for you, this one here, I really wanted to ask you, when was the time in your life where you thought this was all a possibility? Because going back, you did play football in high school. Yeah. yeah. You know, you had that track and field you know, mindset, you know, throughout your high school career. But, you know, when was it when you're like, I can really go pro, I can really take this to the next level, or I can really you know, make, make a name, make, make a name out of myself, make something for myself. Yeah. So 20, 2017, it was a world year. Um, I was a, I was a freshman in college. Um, my end goal in life, I wrote it down, told my parents and I said, all right, I just want to make the USA final. And at the time USA in 2017, we were just deep with hurdlers. So like, yeah. Ali Harris, David Oliver, Aries Merritt, Jason Richardson, Jeff Porter, um, Devin Allen, myself, there's one more, oh, and um, Cameron Payne. All of us was in that final. And I was like, you know what? I just want to make the final. And when I made the final, I had the third fastest time going in. So I had a possibility to, to make the, my first world team in 2017 and go to uh, World Camps in London. Now, obviously, that kind of, you know, everybody knows the, the outcome of the story. I didn't make the team, but at that point when I got fourth and I was leading the rank till about hurdle nine or 10, I kind of knew I was like, Oh snap. I can really, I can really do some damage with this. Like I can really make this team. And after 2017, I kind of just let that sour taste in my mouth and 2018 dominated 2019 world champion 2020 COVID was what the champion <laughs> 2021 <laughs> Indoor, indoor tour, Olympic silver, 2022, indoor, outdoor world champion, 2023, indoor uh, tour winner again. So I just kept that sour taste in my mouth. And I just knew like one day, you know, it all makes sense. And, you know, hindsight, like I said, I never gave up. I stayed consistent with my work. And here we are. And it definitely shows throughout your career here. But my question for you was, is what motivates you on a daily basis to continue to do this? Because you've already set records. You've already become, you know, some may have, everyone has their own opinion about sports and, you know, athletes in, in general, but arguably being the greatest college runner of all time, you know, what motivates you on a daily basis to become, you know, better? Or I want to keep doing this. What motivates you? Yeah. Um, it's for me, it's just the longevity. Um, 
like you said before, from 2017 to 2019, whenever I was in the race, I dominated. Yeah. Um, it's the same thing for track and field for me now. Um, I'm on the senior level. And 2019 to however long I decide to do this do this career, I want to be able to always have my name in the conversation. Um, the biggest thing is, too, is like a, I was talking with Colin Jackson, um, former world record holder, British British 110-meter hurdler. He said he won medals in the 80s, the 90s, and the 2000s. You think uh-huh. about that's the longevity of somebody's career. I want to be able to say the same thing. So I was talking with my lady about it, and I said I want to be able to win medals in, I guess you say, 2010s, 2020s, and 2030s. You know, I want yeah. to be able to have that longevity in my career. So, you know, it's just when I'm done with the sport, I don't want to say like, oh man, I wish in 2022, I would have got a bronze instead of a fourth place. Or in 2023, I wish I would have got the silver instead of a, you know, you never want to say, I wish I could have done this or that. It's just, you work hard when it's time to put up or shut up. You you put up your, you put up your work. Yeah. And when it's time to step away from the sport, you can say, look, I gave it everything I got. Now I can either coach. If you want to not do the sport at all, you can just walk away from it and be happy. Yeah, no, most definitely. So what does your diet consist of, you know, on a daily basis, just going through the motions throughout your day? You know, what does your diet mainly consist of? Because that body <laughs> doesn't <laughs> just come overnight. You don't just yeah, get that from, it, you, you know, can't just eat McDonald's every yeah, day. You can't, yeah, you can't exactly. just eat <laughs> get a junk food. So what does your diet yeah. consist of? Uh, pretty much it's, uh, it's, it's really no fast food, um, yeah. no sodas, really just fruit juice and water, um, four meals a day, regardless of, you know, whatever you have, um, take it through like maybe like bacon and egg for, for breakfast when you're all done after practice, you get that practice, protein shake and a sandwich, peanut butter jelly sandwich, do weights after that, come back home, uh, whatever, whatever frozen dinner you can get get some yeah. protein in you and then you eat another meal before dinner and then you just you know between all that you're always burning and you know you're always putting yeah. the protein and stuff in your body so on a lighter note here you got to have a cheat day mm-hmm. if, if you're having a cheat day what's your go-to meal or what's something that's your kryptonite probably a nice bottle of wine or an ice cold thing of bourbon give me Ooh. some give me like a nice little salted I've been really into peanuts lately, so maybe like a handful of peanuts, pistachios, <laughs> maybe some light, um, some 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 light of herbs, and that's that's my cheat meal right there. It's perfect. Okay, that's a that's an interesting combination there. You got some peanuts, you got some bourbon, and you got some wine. <laughs> nice. Yeah, little, exactly. Like, Just pick your nice, poison. Pick your yeah, poison. Yeah, exactly. So, um. I did want to ask you, do you follow any other sports besides, you know, track and field other than those, you know, yeah, what you do? I would say, I would say I'm pretty big on all sports. Um, yeah. I pay attention. Obviously, uh, before we start the show, I was talking about fantasy football. Yeah. I'm defending champion right here. So I'm trying to, I try to keep <laughs> some good morale on my, on my side, but um, football, basketball, um, you know, it's just one of the things. Base. I don't really watch baseball, but uh, you yeah. know, I watch it if it's on TV. Um, I'm big into softball right now. Um, yeah. AU has um, Athletes Unlimited has a nice little league on ESPN. I like to watch. Got a couple friends in there, but um, really just all sports. If it's on the TV, I'll watch it. <clears throat> but um, of course, track and field is my main. And then you think about the mainstream sports that we have in America between basketball and NFL. Um, I think those are the two that I follow the most. I wanted to ask you, what did you think of Lionel Messi going to the MLS, coming to (laughs) Inter-Miami? I I thought that was crazy. It was in the works for a few months, and now he's finally here, and people are just going ballistic. So what do you – what did you think when that happened? I think it's pretty cool just to have, a a, like you said, another marquee person here in America. Um, You know, you think LeBron James is there supporting him. I know probably a couple other, you know, great athletes are there supporting him. But it's just one of the things where – it's funny to watch those type of people that you see on TV get closer and closer to you um, in, in a sense. So I thought it was pretty cool, especially for him to play his first game and make a goal. It yeah. just shows you that he's he is who he is. 
And some people thought he was washed. And I, you know, will go on record <laughs> saying I thought he was washed after PSG. I was like, I don't know what's going to happen here. And then he had that miraculous Argentina World Cup run there. And then, you know, he goes back to PSG, finishes off at PSG. They don't know what he's going to do. If he tends to go back to Barcelona, and next thing you know, he's on Inter Miami tearing it up as we speak. So <laughs> it's just crazy to think about. About It's just, it's weird. And it's so funny from what you said earlier in the show of like never giving up, you know, keep pushing yourself. Actually, back in 2014, David Beckham was, you know, always been friends with uh, Messi. And now he, it's a full circle moment for him. And he was able to sign him. It was like a whole thing I saw on Instagram. So it was really cool yeah. to see, you know, how that transpired. That's pretty for cool. Him. Yeah, that's real yeah. nice. I thought, I thought it was awesome. So um, you have a crazy schedule, but, you know, everyone in their free time, some people watch TV, some people may not. But do you watch any TV shows or anything like you're currently binging or anything? Uh, uh... Well, not nothing that that rings the bell off the top of my head. Um, I'm watching that new quarterback series on Netflix. Oh yeah, that's big. Um, I sat down and watched a little bit of Too Hot to Handle with my lady. That's <laughs> I guess that's I guess that's big. Yeah. Um, but it's just something like you're just you're not really watching it, but the drama starts to unfold, and you're kind of just <laughs> looking slowly at the TV just to figure out what the hell is going on. Um. Uh, another, I guess another show that I watched before that, um, the circle is a good one, but, um, other than oh, yeah. that, not nothing, not nothing too crazy. Those are the main three that come to the top of my head. What do you think of the quarterback series? I think it's really good. Um, yeah, it's in the works right now, uh, with track and field, we're trying to, they're trying to get, you know, cameras around some of the star oh, you know, wow. track and field athletes. So you know, just to bring a little bit more, you know, juice, a little bit more pop to track and field. Um, actually, Noah Lyles is releasing his, um, he's releasing his little docu series, uh, leading up to World Championships. I think it actually drops uh, August seventeenth. So it's just something, you know. We're always just trying to, you know, get into now. Um, so it's funny. Someone asked me, "Do would you want to do that series?" And I said, "Not really," because I kind of like my. My yeah. personal space. Now, if they say we really want to, we really want Grant Holland, then yeah, I'll, I'll make it happen. But yeah. with that type of thing, if you think you have a camera on you twenty four seven, like you yeah. can't really get away from it. And it's not like I'm doing anything shady, but like I like to come home, play yeah. some nice jazz music, unwind, see my beautiful dog, see the see the lady, call my parents, gossip a little bit, get in front of the computer, watch some YouTube videos on Call of Duty or whatever. Yeah, and then go out to the golf course and hit my club. Yeah, no, I mean, I give Mahomes, Mariota, and Kirk Cousins credit for having those cameras followed around them throughout the entire season. Yeah. You saw the highs and the lows. I yeah, have you finished it yet? No, not yet. I think I got like maybe two episodes left. But my favorite okay. character on that show right now is Kirk Cousins. Same you know, here. The resilience and the way he's just he's just a down to earth guy. I think yeah. he. I'm rooting for him next year. Me too. Obviously, I, I I might just draft him on my fantasy team just because I have a soft <laughs> spot for him. But um, I, I really do like how it really his character development was really really nice. I agree with that too, and you know I think so many people have so many different opinions of athletes in general. But when you get to see them firsthand through the you know the docu series and kind of see how they go throughout their yeah. daily life and how much pressure they have on them as the quarterback in the NFL with all the media attacking them constantly, you kind of see their side of the story. I thought it was really cool to see. I really hope that. Well, they said they're going to do a season two. They're trying to. Yeah, exactly. Out, they're trying to figure out the quarterbacks that they're going to do, but I thought it was really cool. And hey. I hope to yeah, see you on the track and field show. <laughs> Get yeah, those cameras rolling. It, it'll be interesting. Like I said, I think Noah Noah has a good personality to do that. He kind of enjoys yeah. having a camera on him 24-7. He, li he likes that. Like, that's his personality. Um, I'm really curious to watch it and um, see how it is. I'm sure I'll pop up in there, like, every blue moon because, obviously, Noah and I are good friends. But um, yeah. all the meets he was at, I was at. Um, Minus like a couple, but it'll be good to see, you know, his personality and everything uh, brought to the brought to the limelight. Yeah. So the talk of the summer right now is Barbie and Oppenheimer. Some people have seen Barbie. <laughs> they're, they're doing a double double ticket there. Barbenheimer. Have you seen either Barbie or Oppenheimer yet? Neither. Neither. Do you have any? Plans? I haven't been to the movies any in so long. Any no, plans on seeing them? I have no plans to see it. No, not at all. Not at all. <laughs> 
All right, fair. I haven't seen them either, but I just had to ask because so many people are talking about it. It's kind of, you know, the talk of the town right now all over everywhere. So it was just, just a question I had to ask. But your favorite food spot in Gainesville, what does that place consist of? Uh, Probably Spur Years and Celebration Point right now. Um, okay. They have good good lists. Um, it's always good when you know one of the owners. So um, I go up there, shake some hands, and um, I like to just sit there like, like I'm an old, like I'm an old man, and have a lot of trouble on my mind. I just have a couple of drinks, a little bit of wine, a little bit of bourbon, maybe a side of peanut, yeah, a little bit of both. But there you go, <laughs> there you go. You know the menu. You know the menu. Uh, so, outside of track and field, well, I guess inside of track and field, you have your brand deals, and that's a really big part of your, you know, career. And uh, you know, so brand deals for you. What is it like being an Adidas, uh, brand, you know, partnership with them? You know, what's that like? I mean, it's, it's very, um, it's very two-sided, you know, for yeah. me and for them, obviously they pay me the money to promote their brand and wear their brand on the track and they send me stuff, but it's also, I really like them because like, even when I'm not at my best or when I feel like I'm not at my best, they're still supporting me and they're always there. I mean, really all the deals that I have between, um, Fit Aid, Comcast, I have a couple uh sponsorship deals here in Gainesville. Bodies and Bonds Acupuncture, um, West Family Chiropractic, um, all the all the people that you know support me and help me yeah. get on with my with my my really my athletic career. Um, they all believe in me, which is a is a huge sport, a uh, huge spot. But um, Adidas kind of just set the tone for everybody else just to kind of hop on the hop on the bandwagon. For sure. So, how did that Adidas partnership come about for you? Um, really, just. Um, after 2019, it kind of just went into like a bidding war between Adidas and Nike. Mm -hmm. um, Nike kind of just fumbled the bag at that point, and Adidas kind of just swooped me off the ground. And that was all she wrote. You know, I, 2019, now it's 2023. So really just going through and figuring out everything. And we talked about Wonder Boy in the beginning of the show. I see on your Instagram, you know, hashtag Wonder Boy. Where did that nickname come from? Wonder Boy is a, like you said, it's another nickname. One of my good friends, Vince Low, he gave it to me. It just some of the plays I was making on the football field, running on the track. He was just like, man, this my, he's just a Wonder Boy. At the time, I wasn't, I wasn't a man, quote unquote, yet. So yeah. he gave me just Wonder Boy, and I just stuck with it. And um, you know, it was just something that, you know, it kind of just brings like a little bit of a, a little bit of a nickname, you know, on and off the track. You know, people kind of, you know. Wonder Boy or Flamingo or Grant, you know, I always just, when they say those things, I have that connotation towards my name. Yeah. So my next question for you is, is recently you got into coaching and I saw that on your Instagram, on your social media, and that's a big yep, yep. there. Yeah. So, um, you know, why did you get into coaching uh, at such a young age at, you know, just 25, because you're still, you know, pursuing and you have your professional running career. So why coaching yeah. at such a young age? Definitely coaching on that that um, get coach app um, that Corey Carter started. Um, it's just one of the big things now. Where when I was growing up, I would love to have gotten uh, at the time David Oliver was my um, was my idol. I would love to get tips and tricks from David Oliver through that. Um, it's the same thing for me now. Like people sign up, and I'm able to really give them feedback. Not only you know if it's day like today, oh, but I'm able to get them feedback really, you know, whenever. And, um, you know, that feedback is critical at a young age because that kind of can make a break of an athlete. So really just going through with that was just one of the things where I just wanted to really just help out and really just continue just to grow the sport. No. Yeah. I, I really like that a lot. And it's really nice to see professional athletes like yourself, you know, wanting to help kids out even at such a young age, because your career and your schedule is so busy and it's really nice to see, you know, you, potentially want, you know, helping people out at such a, at such a young age. So I want to go back to the pandemic time before we do wrap up the show, the COVID time, what was it like being a part of the 2020 Olympics in Tokyo when the pandemic was going on? Like, how was that like on a daily basis? Like, what was that like? <laughs> yeah, it definitely sucked in 2020 because it was kind of just like a teeter totter, like, Oh, we're still going to have it. Oh, it's not going to happen. Oh, we're going to have it. Oh, it's not going to happen. So it kind of just one of the one of the things where I just continue just to work. But once we got to the Olympics, it was still weird. Um, everybody asked me all the time, how was it at the Olympics? I said it was very boring. It's kind of like yeah. a glorified, congratulations, you made it to the military camp type of vibe. <laughs> um, 
It was like once you got inside the village, you couldn't leave. It wow. wasn't no exploring it. It was really, literally like a bubble. How the Simpsons had that big bubble when all that stuff happened in that episode. It was literally that. So wow. all we could do was stay in the bubble. COVID tested uh, morning, morning and and night. It was just really just weird. Um, granted, yeah, I went there and I was able to capture the silver, the first loss I took that whole season. But overall, the experience and everything, it just wasn't the best. So I'm really looking forward to Paris, really just to kind of get like a new taste in my mouth about it at all. Yeah. On your Instagram, you posted a picture with another runner, if I'm pronouncing his name right here, Hansley Parchment. Is that correct? Oh, Hansel. Hansel, Hansel, Hansel Parchment. Excuse me. Sorry for the mispronunciation. Yeah, yeah. He's a J- J- Jamaican Olympic gold and bronze medalist. This really was important to you as you looked up to him throughout your younger career. Take us back to when you met him. Yeah, um, met him literally at, at practice while we were in the Olympics. And um, he's been a down-to-earth guy uh, since I met him. Um, I've raced him plenty of times at this point. And every single time at the end of every race, he's the first person to come congratulate me. Um, down-to-earth guy. If anything, I know if I bring him to Gainesville, he'll fit right in with all my friends and everything. But, um, you know, the first encounter is really just humbling because, you know, you see all these people that you watch on YouTube and everything like that, and you're able to line up next to them and really, you know, share that moment with them. It's, it's really, you know, it's, it's, it's inspirational. You know, that's the, that's the type of vibe and everything that I want to be able to do for the next generation. You know, when they meet me, they are excited. They're, um, you know, want to ask questions. They're young and eager and ready to learn. But when we line up on the track, it's, you know, it's unforgiving, and I just want to go after it. And this one really stuck with me here. You have a lot of quotes, but this one here you wrote on your Instagram, I felt like a young Kobe Bryant in the presence of Michael Jordan. That's a good one there. I was like, wow. And I read that because I just wanted to hear your opinion, and I was like, you know, damn, that's that's a really good quote there because Kobe was – Felt like yeah. it, in the flesh of MJ, and it just seemed like at that moment there for you, it was the passing of the torch. Yeah, I, I mean, at that point, he had um, he definitely had won uh, the Olympic gold. I was second, but even after the race, we're talking before the award ceremony, and I was just asking him tips and tricks. I mean, even last year after uh, world championships, we we're still talking. You know, at that point, it's you know, Hansel's one of the one of the older hurdlers that, that that are on the circuit right now, but he's still competing like he's maybe 22, 23 years old. He still has that that fire in his heart. So the biggest thing is is really just, you know, learning, you know, what did he do when he won gold or when he won silver or when he won a world championship medal? What did he do to get through, you know, tough times, injuries and everything like that? And, you know, he's just, you know, he's just a down to earth guy. So I really appreciate, you know, all the tips and tricks he gave me. Now it's just kind of just, you know, going forward, taking those tips and trips and implementing it into my game. And, you know, the next person that comes up, you know, I can, you know, pass down everything that I know to them. Yeah. So before we do wrap up the show, before we get to the five questions, my last question for you was, is how do you maintain your body, you know, outside of the diet part? Because I know that's super important, but how do you maintain your body of not getting hurt? Because, Sports, everyone gets hurt. You tweak a hamstring, you roll an ankle. You know, how do you maintain your body so where you don't get hurt? Or, you know, what do you do? Yeah, uh, lots of treatment. Um, I, I, I take pride in, you know, giving my body the rest and the recovery that it needs. So really Monday through Friday um, at some doctor's office, getting treatment, getting my body back right. Um, when it's time to rest, I rest. Um, when it's time to, you know, crank it up and go hard. I'm right there for it, but it always starts with preparation. You know, that's the, that's the biggest, that's the biggest, you know, cue preparation and and then um, being present in, in, in the moment, you know, not really like saying like, Oh, I can't wait till this rep's done so I can go out or I can do this. Or I can do that. Really just staying present in the time and really just honing in on what you need to do um, with me. Um, I take pride in really the preparation part, you know, watching the film, um, understanding that I need to hydrate the day before if it's hot outside, um, stretching the, you know, morning and night before bed. You know, just the small things is kind of just really keep the body um, going. But um, really just the treatment part aspect is uh, is huge. And like I said, from all my sponsors that really sponsor me, they understand that I'm, a, I'm big on my team and, you know, my team keeps me healthy. Yeah, no, most definitely. So, 
as always for my guests for the show, we always do five questions. So my first question for you was, is what was your biggest failure and what did you learn from that experience? Um, biggest failure. Um, I don't really want to say anything's a failure in my eyes. Uh, biggest lesson I could definitely say is, um, really just all continue just to find ways to stay young. Um, at one point I felt like in track, I was just really like, oh, I got to get ready to go to work, you know, make, treating it like really like heavy and dark. Um, I always just wanted to find, you know, continue just to stay young. Um, you know, that's my biggest lesson that through it all, like even now, like I wake up in the morning, I'm like, all right, I'm anxious to get out to the track. Now, granted, yeah, the workout's going to suck because it's hot outside, but I'm yeah. anxious just to continue just to get out there and just to have some fun. Number two, if you could go back to your 18-year-old self, what's one piece of advice you would give yourself? Oh, um, with what I know now, uh, maturity-wise, I wouldn't I wouldn't be so caught up on on friendships and relationships. I think that's the biggest one. Wow. What does your morning routine look like? Um, it's funny you say that seven 30 on the dot, my dog wakes up and she's ready to eat food. So usually I wake up at seven 30, I feed her, I let her out and I continue. I slowly start, uh, straining out my house with some tea that's probably brewing. <laughs> what is your biggest pet peeve? Um, biggest pet peeve, leaving the toothpaste cap off. Oh, oh, oh that's a good one. That's an interesting one. <laughs> <laughs> I find, and then the biggest thing the funny part about it all sometimes i do it myself and i get mad at myself when i see that i did it but you know it's like when you start to push out two bits and it's all hard and everything you're like oh, damn this just sucks <laughs> you just leave it off in the bathroom and you're like you go back and you're like that's my biggest pet peeve but i'm the one that did that <laughs> yep exactly now you pissed off at yourself <laughs> right what is the weirdest food that you've ever eaten caviar do you like caviar? Absolutely not. It's so overrated. <laughs> I, think, I think it is too. I think it's, ugh, it's, it's, it's very, it's dead. It's, it's raw overrated. fish. It's, it's dead fish, isn't it? Yeah. It's dead. Uh, I want to, it's just, yeah, it's fish. It's fish. Yeah, it Some is. type of fish. I don't know it's, exactly what It's nasty. Fish. It's like the little beads. But yeah. It's, that's overrated. It's, it's so overpriced. overpriced. <laughs> it's for no so reason. overpriced for no reason it's just a flex statement it's like oh we're gonna order caviar as an appetizer it's like uh, I'll, just, I'll just take the i'll take the cheese fries <laughs> yeah exactly i'll take the cheese fries or just give me some peanuts <laughs> some peanuts exactly so um but anyways it was a pleasure to have you on thank you so much for coming on it was really great to you know hear your side of the story about track and field and progressing as a, a professional runner and your next olympics you have the 2024 olympics so it's just awesome to have you on as another yeah, um, another University of Florida Gator graduate. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate you, brother. Uh, you're doing great things with this podcast, man. I'm I'm excited to watch it grow off. Thank you, man. Well, plug your stuff before we do wrap up. Um, right, but it, just oh. yeah, just uh, in, your Instagram, anywhere anyone can follow you on social media, or just you know some YouTube. Oh, stuff. just yeah, easy. easy just uh, two. Flamingo, two A's, two O's, and an underscore. Uh, real simple, guys, so I appreciate you. Instagram, Flamingo with two O's and an underscore. You guys will find him on the track, running the 110s, breaking records. The next Olympics, he, excuse me, the next Olympic he is going to be a part of is the 2024 Olympics in Paris. So, guys, as always, thank you guys so much for tuning in. We just hit 1,200 plays. We're almost at 1,300. Thank you guys so much for the support. And we will see you next time.